Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Nikki Haley. Donald Trump. Donald Trump won a decisive victory in the Iowa caucuses. That's where we're starting the seven from The Washington Post. I'm Christina Quinn. It's Tuesday, January 16th. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. The results are in. Former President Trump won 51 percent of the vote in the first contest of the 2024 Republican presidential primaries. Well, I want to thank everybody. This has been some period of time. And most importantly, we want to thank the great people of Iowa. Thank you. We love you all. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis won about 21 percent of the vote, narrowly beating former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley at about 19 percent in the all-important race for second place. DeSantis said the result was a sign that his campaign could carry on beyond Iowa, where he had focused his election efforts. I can tell you, because of your support, in spite of all of that that they threw at us, everyone against us, we've got our ticket punched out of Iowa. And despite coming in third, Haley said only she could take on Trump in the next primaries, where she's polling above DeSantis. I can safely say, tonight, Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. Tech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy came in fourth and ended his presidential bid. Trump's dominance in the first test of the primaries puts him one step closer to the 2024 Republican nomination and a historic rematch with President Biden in the general election. The next vote is next Tuesday in New Hampshire. Number two, Houthi militants struck a U.S.-owned container ship near Yemen. U.S. officials said there were no injuries or significant damage to the ship hit by the militants yesterday. The Iran-backed group from Yemen has been attacking commercial ships in the Red Sea since November. They're doing it to protest Israel's war in Gaza, and their attacks have disrupted trade in one of the world's most important shipping routes. And yesterday's strike reveals their intention and ability to continue these assaults, just days after airstrikes by the U.S. and Britain meant to stop them. Tensions in the region continue to rise. At number three, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was released after a controversial hospital stay. Austin was hospitalized on January 1st by complications from a surgery to treat prostate cancer. He kept his hospitalization secret from the White House, causing a political firestorm. Top cabinet officials are normally expected to disclose their whereabouts and serious medical conditions. Austin said yesterday that he plans to recover and work at home before returning to the Pentagon. But the controversy probably isn't over. The Defense Department Inspector General is investigating the incident, and House Republicans say they will carry out an inquiry, raising the possibility of public oversight hearings in an election year. Number four. The Bear, Beef, and Succession dominated last night's Emmys. The Bear was the big winner across the comedy categories, including Best Comedy Series. Jeremy Allen White took home Best Lead Actor, and Ayo Adebari won Best Supporting Actress. In her acceptance speech, Adebari thanked her parents for their support of her career. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for uh, loving me and... uh, letting me feel beautiful and black and proud of all of that. Um, I just love you so much. Um, Probably not like a dream to emigrate to this country and have your child be like, I want to do improv, but um, (laughs) you're real ones. Uh, Thank you so much for this. It means the world. Thank you. Succession was widely recognized in the Drama Awards, with Kieran Culkin and Sarah Snook claiming Best Lead Actor and Actress. And Beef won an award for nearly every limited series category. It was a night of historic firsts and TV nostalgia. Women of color won big. Cast members from series such as Cheers, Grey's Anatomy, Martin, and The Sopranos reunited on stage to present awards. And Elton John finally achieved EGOT status, meaning he became part of an elite club of people who have won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. You can find full lists of the winners and all the best moments in our newsletter.
An unprecedented flu strain is attacking hundreds of animal species. That's number five. A potent strain of H5N1 avian influenza has struck some 320 bird and mammal species. It's led to mass deaths of animals on farms and in the wild, including a catastrophic die-off of elephant seal pups. The virus's reach exploded around 2021, when it began to spread among migrating birds. It's now raged through animal populations on every continent on Earth, except Australia and Antarctica. And it's worrying for reasons beyond its damage to animal populations. There's a risk the virus could eventually evolve the ability to be transmitted to humans, leading to another pandemic. At number six, American women are gaining more economic power. By 2030, women could control much of the $30 trillion in assets held by baby boomers. This is according to a study by business consulting firm McKinsey. As male baby boomers die, they will leave their assets to their wives, who are typically younger with more years ahead of them. This trend is happening while younger women are starting more businesses than their male counterparts. And women are earning as much or more than their husbands in 45% of heterosexual marriages. This shift could be monumental. Trillions of dollars are flowing into women's hands, and that could reshape their lives and have profound effects on the nation as a whole. And at number seven, love languages might not really exist. If you've ever spent time thinking of ways to improve your romantic relationships, you've probably heard about love languages. It's the theory that there are five key ways that people express and receive love. It's helped to guide couples since it was first introduced 30 years ago. Believers say that understanding your partner's love language is the key to a happy relationship. But there isn't much to back that up. A recent study found that core assumptions about love languages aren't supported by the evidence. It said that humans express their love in more than just five ways, and that our actions don't fit neatly into five categories. Some scientists have even suggested that love language thinking can do harm in some cases by encouraging people to stay in difficult relationships. So next time your partner starts talking to you about love languages, just tell them that you've seen research that suggests they're talking nonsense. That should sort out all your relationship issues. All right, you're all caught up. But before you go, I want to plug my new podcast, which is a series of audio courses. It's called Try This. The first season is out now, and it's all about how to help you sleep better. Find it wherever you listen to podcasts. You listening to my show is my favorite love language. I'm Christina Quinn. I'll meet you back here tomorrow. Tomorrow. 